Hi students, as a part of polymers, today I am going to explain you about the, the compounding of plastics. So first and foremost, uh, we have to discuss what exactly is the compounding of plastic. So the process which involves the addition of certain additives to the plastic in order to impart some special properties to the plastic is called as compounding of the plastic. The process of adding the certain additives to the plastic in order to impart some special properties to the plastic is called as compounding of plastic. Now let us discuss what are those additives or OR ingredients which are being added during the compounding of the plastic in order to impart some special properties to the plastic. So basically, eight constituents or eight additives or eight ingredients are mainly added during the compounding of plastics. The first one is resins or binders. Second one is fillers or extenders. Third one is plasticizers. Fourth one is stabilizers. Fifth one is catalyst or accelerators. Sixth one is pigments or dyes. Sixth one is, seventh one is antioxidants. And the last one is, um, last one is lubricants. So these are the eight ingredients or additives which are going to be added during the, the compounding of the plastic to the plastic in order to impart some special properties to the plastic. Now let us discuss one by one. That is, what is the function of each and every additive or ingredient or constituent which is being added to the plastic during the compounding of plastic and what are uh, the examples of uh, those additives so first one is resins or binders now resins or binders the name itself suggests something right so this is the one which holds all the remaining ingredients or additives together. So already I have explained that uh, eight ingredients or additives are being added during the compounding of the plastics. Now, what this resins or binders will do is, this will bind uh, or hold all the other constituents together. All the other seven ingredients or additives together. Right? So and it is also called as the binder. So what binder? The name itself is self-explanatory. Self it is binding all the remaining uh, additives or uh, constraints which are going to be added during the compounding of the plastic to the plastic. Now coming to the examples of resins or binders. So two examples, thermoplastic resins which are being added to the thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics, thermosetting uh, resins which are being added to the thermosetting plastics. And what are thermoplastics and thermosetting plastics? I have already clearly explained uh, in one of my videos, which are made on the classification of the plastics. Now coming to the second additive or ingredient which is being added to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic is fillers or extenders. Fillers or extenders. The name is itself is suggesting something. These are the additives which are being added to the plastic which fills the voids, V-O-I-D-S, voids or gaps which are present inside the plastic. Not only that, this will give the extending property to the plastic. This will give the extending property to the plastic. Apart from uh, importing uh, extending property to the plastic, uh, these fillers or extenders also impart some special properties to the plastics. Now let us discuss what are those uh, a special properties which are imported by the fillers or extended to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic with examples. For example, if we take uh, the barium salts. So barium salts will make the plastic impervious to excess. 
impervious to explosions uh, these barium salts which are added to the plastic uh, during the compounding of the plastic will not allow the penetration of uh, the x rays inside the plastic because already we know that x rays are highly energetic so if the plastic uh, is uh, allowing the penetration of the highly energetic x rays inside it uh, so definitely it gets damaged so definitely we need a substance inside the plastic uh, which makes the plastic impervious to the x rays which makes the plastic uh, without allowing uh, the x rays inside it to make the plastic uh, so that uh, the x rays will not penetrate inside it so that solves which will make the plastic impervious to x rays or or will not allow the allow the penetration of x rays inside the plastic thereby avoiding the damage of the plastic is barium salts and barium salts comes under the category of fillers or extractors another example of fillers or extractors is um, asbestos so asbestos asbestos um, they will make uh, the plastic uh, heat and corrosion resistance or corrosion resistance asbestos which comes under the category of fillers and extractors will make the plastic uh, heat and corrosion resistance next examples of fillers or extractors uh, which uh, impart special properties to the plastic is carborundum what is carborundum student silicon carbide silicon carbide quartz and mica these these three that is carborundum silicon carbide quartz and mica will uh, uh, improve the hardness of uh, the plastic that is they will they will impart extra hardness to the plastic. so this is about the, the second ingredient or additive which is being added to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic so third additive is plasticizers so third additive or ingredient which is being added to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic is plasticizers plasticizers so the name is self explanatory so these are uh, the ingredients or additives which are added to the plastic in order to improve the plasticity of the plastic now what do you mean by plasticity plasticity is a property of a substance by virtue of which it can be molded or altered very easily so in order to increase the plasticity of the plastic uh, we need to add the um, plasticizers whenever we add the plasticizers uh, to the plastic uh, then uh, we can easily mold or alter the shape of uh, the plastic uh, we desire so plasticizers impart the plasticity to the plastic by which we can easily mold or alter the plastic examples of the plasticizers includes vegetable oils camphor camphor triglyceride phosphate try and tetrabutyl phosphate try tricyl phosphate try and tetrabutyl phosphate so these are the examples of uh, the examples of the plasticizers so coming again what are the examples of the plasticizers students vegetable oils camphor try tricyl phosphate try and tetrabutyl phosphate so this is about the plastic so the next ingredient which is being added to the plastic in order to impart some special property to the plastic is stabilizers stabilizers so the name itself suggests so these are the class of ingredients or additives which are being added to the plastic in order to in order to make the plastic stable during the, the molding process or during the processing that is this will improve the thermal stability of uh, the plastic during the processing so during the processing or during the fabrication process uh, the plastic is subjected to 
is subjected to the high temperatures and high pressures. So definitely the plastic should be resistant to those high temperatures and high pressures uh, during the fabrication of the plastic, during the processing of the plastic. So in order to stabilize uh, them during the processing of the plastic, uh, so that uh, the plastic can uh, withstand to high temperature and the pressure, we are going to add uh, the additives or ingredients such as stabilizers. So basically we have uh, two types of plastic students. The one is opaque plastic and the second one is a transparent plastic. So based upon the type of plastic, uh, we are going to add uh, opaque molding uh, opaque molding stabilizers to opaque uh, plastic whereas uh, transparent molding stabilizers to transparent plastic in order to increase the thermal stability of uh, opaque and transparent plastic uh, respectively during the processing or fabrication Examples of the opaque molding plasticizers, opaque molding stabilizers are lead chromate, white lead and red lead. Examples of uh, the transparent molding stabilizers which increases the stability, thermal stability of the transparent plastics are, are stereates of lead barium and cadmium. So this is about the stabilizers. Now coming to another, another uh, additive or ingredient which is being added to the plastic uh, is uh, the catalyst or accelerators. So this is very important. Catalyst or accelerators. This catalyst or accelerators are especially added or used uh, during the preparation of thermosetting plastics only during the preparation or to the thermosetting plastics. Just to guess students, what could be the reason why this catalyst or accelerators are especially used to, during the preparation of the thermosetting plastics only? Because thermosetting plastics are cross-linked polymers, which are obtained by development of cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chains and this development of cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chains which results in the formation of cross linker polymer that is thermosetting plastic or thermoset is very slow process that is the development of cross linker polymers cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chain during the preparation of cross linker polymers, so called as thermosetting plastic, is very slow process. So, there is a need to speed up the formation of uh, the cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chains by which the cross linker polymer, that is thermosetting plastic, is uh, prepared uh, faster. So, for that reason only, this particular ingredient or additive is especially added to the thermosetting plastic, uh, that is catalyst or accelerators. So, do remember students. So, thermosetting plastic preparation involves the formation of cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chains. And this process of uh, development of cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chains is slow process. So definitely there is a need to speed up the formation of the cross linkages between the adjacent monomeric chains uh, for that reason only during uh, uh, the preparation of thermosetting plastics or thermosets. Uh, this particular additive or uh, ingredient is being added that is catalyst or accelerators. And it is not being added to the thermoplastics because in the thermoplastics uh, linear chains are going to be developed and these linear chains which are going to be developed are fastly developed. So there is no need of catalyst or So do remember students, among the thermosetting plastics and the thermoplastics uh, catalysts or accelerators are basically added to thermosetting plastics only, not for the thermoplastic. What is the reason I have explained to you? Examples of uh, 
The catalyst or the accelerators includes hydrogen peroxide, benzoyl peroxide, the zinc oxide, etc. So this is about catalyst or or accelerators. So the next uh, ingredient which is being added is pigments or dyes. Right. Now it is not good if all the plastics look alike. It is not good if all the plastic look alike. Right. So if all the plastics are white in color, then it won't look good, beautiful, right? So if one color is associated with any of the substance, then uh, the substance will not have the beautiful look. So definitely there is a need to impart uh, the desired color, what we want for the plastic. So in order to impart the desired color for the plastic, what we desire, we need to add uh, the ingredients or additive such as pigments or dyes. So based upon this, we can say that pigments or dyes or uh, the ingredients or additives which are added to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic in order to impart the color to the plastic. In order to impart desired color to the plastic. So examples of the pigments are in dyes which are added to the plastic in order to impart special color to the plastic includes uh, carbon black the name itself suggests it goes the black color to the plastic zinc oxide which will impart white color to the plastic chromium trioxide which imparts green color to the plastic right so this is about pigments or dyes so the next uh, Additive or ingredient which is being added to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic is antioxidants. Antioxidants, the name itself suggests, which will act against the oxidation. Because whenever any of the substance undergo oxidation, then the substance gets damaged. Then the substance gets damaged. Now, if the plastic undergo oxidation, so definitely the plastic gets damaged. So there is a need to avoid the oxidation of for the plastic uh, so that we can uh, avoid the damage of the plastic. So for which we need to add the substance which acts anti to the oxidation which is damaging the plastic. So those uh, ingredients or additives which acts as anti to the oxidation which damages the plastic or nothing but antioxidants. So examples of the antioxidants which are added to the plastic in order to avoid the oxidation of the plastic includes diphenyl amines, phenyl para naphtha naphthyl amines, diphenyl amines and phenyl para naphtha amines. So the last ingredients or additive which is being added to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic uh, to avoid the friction between the mold and the article and in order to give the glossy finish to the plastic is the lubricant. So lubricant, the name itself suggests lubricants. What, are the, what is the purpose of the lubricant which will avoid the friction? So during uh, the molding, during the fabrication of the plastic, what will happen is, so we will place the plastic material in the mold. We will place the plastic material in the mold. And there is a need to avoid the friction between the plastic material and the mold. So if you are not going to avoid the friction between the plastic material and the mold, uh, then plastic will wear and tear away. Wear and tear away by which uh, the plastic gets damaged. So, there is a need to avoid the friction between the plastic article and the mold during the fabrication of the plastic. So, for which lubricant is being added to the plastic as one of the ingredient or additive during the compounding of the plastic. Not only that, uh, this particular uh, lubricant will also give the glossy look to the plastic. Glossy means shiny look to the plastic. So this is about uh, the compounding of the plastic. Yet additives are most commonly added uh, additives or ingredients to the plastic during the compounding of the plastic in order to impart some special properties to the plastic. I hope you understood students. Thanks.